So good afternoon, everyone. And a very warm welcome to each one of you. From the core of my heart. Let us begin to prepare ourselves for this session on Kashmir Shaivism. And begin with a prayer for grace. Om. Akhanda Mandala Karam Vyaptam Yena Chara Charam Tatpadam Darshitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Agyana Timirandhasya Gyana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Deva Para Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Om Shri Sadguru Venamaha We bow down to all the masters at all levels of existence for all the blessings they have showered on us. And a special bow down to all the masters of Kashmir Shaivism who gave us this very wonderful scientific understanding into the process of creation whereby one can see how Shiva, who is all-powerful, absolutely free, who is Svachandanath, who can do anything for his own play, created a universe which has form and which also has attributes. So how this creation happens and how the absolute power of divine when it decides to descend into the world of form and attribute, goes through modifications which eventually manifest in the world we experienced all the time. So it's a beautiful science. We made an attempt to understand it in the last session, but it involves certain complex concepts. So I thought it would be a good idea to go through them again 
and perhaps with a varied point of view so that it becomes evident why Kashmir Shaivism is to be learned. It is to be learned because it provides a scientific mechanism into the process of manifestation. And when we become aware of the process of manifestation, we also find the key to go beyond the manifestation and find the absolute power of God that is playing through all these manifestations. So once again, we offer our deep respects and bow downs to all the saints and sages of Kashmir Shavism and request their blessings for each one of us who is present here and even for those who may be watching a video recording of this program later so that the concepts percolate down into our own consciousness and become a living reality. Again, many bow downs to the Masters. So, you are, I have shared the chart which I had uh, prepared. Uh, I am referring to this particular chart. <clears throat> you all will be able to see this. Can you read? Huh? Yes? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so, as you see, the title is 36 Tattvas of Trika Kashmir Shaivism. Why do we call it Trika? Because Advait Vedanta or many belief systems think of, you know, this world and the reality behind that world, which is pure consciousness or absolute consciousness or God, call him by whatever name. But Kashmir Shaivism is different because Kashmir Shaivism recognizes the presence of the man also. Because if this universe is there and it is being experienced, somebody is experiencing it. The man is experiencing it. So the man is there. Because of wrong understanding, the man is caught up in the universe. So when understanding is refined, the man can really travel back to the absolute that has become this man. So that is why this is called Trika. And we say 36 Tattvas or 36 elements. So these elements are not created elements. They are the creator elements. Because this is how the devolution takes place. So, the 36 elements come from, these are elements because an element is subject to change. But there is something which is beyond the 36 elements. We call it the a tattva. The tattva are the elements. But that which is beyond the elements is called a tattva. It's called Parashiva, Paramshiva, Absolute Reality. Beyond all categories, nothing can be categorized. So Kashmir Shaivism says that there is this Atatva. 
But a tattva gives rise to these 36 tattvas and which in turn come together, work with each other to create this universe that we experience. So there are three categories. The five Shuddha Tattvas, seven Shuddha Ashuddha Tattvas, and twenty-four Ashuddha Tattvas. So some people may have this objection that why there is something impure. So the fact of the matter is that there is nothing impure. It is a way of describing it. In the last lecture, I had given this example that you have 24 karat gold, but you can, cannot make an ornament out of it. So what is to be done? To give it better shape, to give it better life, to give it better character, some impurity has to be added. But that impurity is not impurity per se. It is essential. It's part of life. It is part of that creation. It is part of the process of creation. And depending upon the kind of ornament you make, that is the kind of impurity you add. So, we don't understand this in the category of, you know, we, don't, we are not guided specifically by the Shuddha, the use of the word Shuddha, 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 and Shuddha. The understanding is that the Shuddha Tattva, these are states where there only pure spiritual energy exists. This is very close to the absolute power of divine. But it goes through certain modifications. And when the desire of creation has become very strong, then that those elements begin to be added which are called the Shuddha Ashuddha Tattvas. The spiritual energy is still there, but it has developed a certain magnetism, a certain power of attraction towards the universe, towards the manifested form. So because of this attraction towards the magnet, uh, mag, uh, manifested form, it starts wearing certain jackets certain clothes, so that it can have a better character or look or whatever. So when it starts wearing a certain, certain jackets, it comes under the influence of those jackets, then it comes to at the end, at the bottom of the second column, you see Purush Tattva. So Purush Tattva is what? The embodied soul. So it is still energy, but that energy has come under the influence of certain jackets, certain kanchukas. And those limitations have taken the better of that energy, which was all powerful. So this Purush becomes a limited being the being that we know, the being that we are. And <clears throat> we will go through these limitations and then this Purush Tattva, the, 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 the born soul, the soul with which we are born, it has certain Prakriti. So what is the Prakriti? We all have brought certain things with us. So why, how we got a particular family, why we are born here in India, why in a different place, in different places, what have been the circumstances of our life. 
what is our agenda everybody has come here with an agenda so all this is embedded here so the purush is there it has this it becomes more condensed because of prakriti and then then the prakriti is under the influence of buddhi ahankara and manas we will discuss this and then the manifestation starts happening in a much better way because there are the panch gyanendriyas the five senses of perception panch karmendriyas the five senses of action panch tanmatras the five seats where all the experiences of all the senses are stored and then the panch mahabhutas the five elements so this is how in the shuddha tatvas in the shuddha the energy is absolute the energy has all the powers but that energy goes a certain very very <clears throat> subtle modification so that is why in this in this column we say these are the five shuddha tatvas the shiva tatva the shakti tatva sadashiv tatva ishwar tatva shuddha vidya tatva when it becomes comes under the the power of illusion of god so then it comes under the maya tatva kala tatva vidya tatva rag tatva kala tatva niyati tatva and it becomes purush tatva now purush tatva is under the influence of prakriti prakriti is under the influence of buddhi buddhi is under the influence of ahankar it could there is in, even in kashmir shavism there is a kind of a difference of opinion whether buddhi should come first or ahankar should come first you can choose whichever way you want and then there is manas the filter through which everything has to pass the likes and dislikes are there so it is like this this is how it is starts happening and then this world is manifested so we will so don't uh, don't take that the shuddha tatva or shuddha shuddha tatva or the ashuddha tatva as something shuddha or ashuddha and we must remember something that through this process of creation it is not that then the five shuddha tatvas they have come under the influence of the magnetic energy or the maya tatva they have changed these five tatvas is still remain in creation they are not really gone they have added certain things that's a different but this these tatvas these five shuddha tatvas remain in the same way when the purush is formed or the under the influence of these six jackets the maya jacket of maya and the five other jackets then purush tatva becomes this purush become comes into existence it is still carrying all the elements from the shuddha tatva and all the other elements from the shuddha ashuddha tatvas so as this the the the, the uh, creation is manifesting and it comes down to this basic of the panch mahabhutas these panch mahabhutas contain within themselves all the states of consciousness all these building blocks that is why it is possible perhaps i did not stress this point in the last lecture that even if though we are caught up in the creation <clears throat> it is always possible for us to go up the ladder this is devolution the, the divine power the divine state has become this universe but since the divine state and the 
the, the magnetic state, spiritual magnetic state, everything is contained here in this universe. It is always possible for us to go into evolution. And how do we go into evolution? We start climbing this staircase. We have so far come down the staircase. But we can start climbing the staircase and we can keep climbing and go up to Shiva Tattva. So Kashmir Shavism provides a very scientific insight into the process of devolution. And that process of devolution contains the key to evolution. Isn't it interesting? So, while we were doing, I mean, just before we started, I think Hema had asked this, uh, made this point, that there is so much talk about working out karma. So she asked this question that you will still have to work out the karma. You may understand these building blocks of creation. You see how everything is coming down from pure energy, how the pure energy is shining in everything. But still the karma is so dominant that one will have to suffer the consequences of karma. There is no other way out. See, this is where Kashmir Shavism is different because it is offering these building blocks at any given point of time if we have the total understanding. We can go into the state of Shiva and become Swachandanath. Who is Swachandanath? He is free. And he is blissful because he comes with Shakti. The Shakti is this, this joy of creation. So there is supreme freedom, there is joy of creation. So one creates his own world. One is doing Leela. That is how what we say these great saints are doing Leela. We normally use the term Leela for the play of God. But these great sages and saints who are there, whom we come across, we see them. And they are so joyful and everything has happened happening around them all by itself. A lila is unfolding. So it is possible for us not to remain bound, but to go back into that state where we participate in the lila that is going on joyfully and we create our own lila. We become Satchandanath. That option is there. That is why <laughs> there are two types of processes mentioned in the scripture. There is the Pippalika mark, the way of the ant. You can choose to remain on the ground, work, work and work. If you have seen a colony of ants, you see how work is divided, how industrious they are, and they put in so much of work. Of course they succeed. That is an option. But the other option is the Vihangam man. You be the bird, be the eagle, fly above the ground. And you leave all that karma and everything behind. Where they are at a level where they are operating, that is the level of the world. In these areas, in this Ashuddha Tattvas, and the Shuddha Ashuddha Tattvas, the karma is operating. But karma does not operate here in the Shuddha Tattvas. So if you bring your awareness into the Shuddha Tattvas, you are free. And that is why it is important or it is wonderful to know Kashmir Shaivism. Often we are so much into our own practice. You know, there are certain practices that each one of us likes. Nothing wrong with it. Practices are great. They bring great purification. But that takes time and a lot of effort. 
But if he somehow if a person is able to upgrade his awareness or her awareness and get into this area, then he is free or she is free. So that is why it is important to understand Kashmir Shavism. So does this make sense? So should we go ahead and go into a process of revision or repetition? <coughs> See, it is like this. The, uh, is everybody comfortable if I take this uh, off? Uh, this uh, because this has been shared earlier also. So. So at the top of this, you know, the five Shuddha Tattvas, at the top, I mean, beyond the 36 elements is the Earth Tattva, which is the Param Shiva. But we are talking of the Shuddha Tattvas, the pure spiritual energies, or we also call them the subjective. That which is the doer, that which is taking all action. So in these energies, at the top of the column is Shiva Tattva. So Shiva Tattva is what is the is pure consciousness. But that consciousness is inert. It is fully aware of itself. But everything is contained inside. It is not about to come out. There is no willingness to come out. So we say Parashakti Nada, Supreme Intelligence, and there's I-ness, Aham, I am, that's it. He doesn't want to do anything. But Shiva does not come alone. Shiva comes with the second Tattva, which is the Shakti Tattva. And Shakti is what? The energy of bliss. This is pure infinite bliss. We always say that. Chidananda. When there is awareness of pure energy, pure awareness is there, then bliss is born. So Shiva and the bliss of that awareness this energy, this is power. That is why say, we say Shiva is inert and the Devi, the energy that is there with Shiva is the supreme power of creation. It is infinite bliss. So it is the power of God, it is the Nataraj, like Shiva dancing. Shakti, one representation in the male form is the Shiva dancing, expressing his joy. Is abandoned, and that is how creation happens. It is only out of joy. We come to this this program. If you know that Umaji is going to give a talk, how do you come? It's out of joy. Somebody is about to get married. This thought of marriage, I am going to marry, is full of bliss. There is joy, it's pure. What the consequences will be after marriage, one doesn't know. It, because the, when the manifestation happens, then the impure elements come into picture. But the very thought of getting married, no impurities have been introduced thus far. It is pure bliss. So you look at your own life and see how this bliss has been working all the time in so many areas of life. Because there is Shiva and there is an interdependent energy of Devi, Shakti Tattva, which is the pure infinite bliss. And that bliss can lead to creation. It is the inherent potential of creation. So how does creation happen? 
happen. Okay, then the third tattva comes, that's Sadashiva. So who is Sadashiva? Sadashiva is the Ichcha Shakti. I want to marry. So there are infinite, then, then Ichcha has arisen. So if this Ichcha has arisen, then it will have some consequence. But when this itch, where is this Ichcha come from? Where is this in intention come from? Or does this intention come from? It comes from your own core of being. So in that state, there is absolutely no difference between you and what you are going to perceive or what you have started perceiving. It is nothing but you. So there is this I-ness in thisness. In the first stage there was only aham. Then Shakti came, aham, 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 aham. There was this vibration, energy. In the third stage, the Sadashiva thought comes up, Icha Shakti comes. So there is a further expansion, but it is an expansion of your own being. So there is no difference. The universe is still contained in the power of God. It has not, does not have any separate existence even in thought. It is just an extension of the divine. So Icha Shakti is there, which is the Sadashiva Tattva. Now if Icha Shakti is there, then what will happen next? So some search will start. So you require to give shape to the Icha or because of the Icha, there comes the Gyan Tattva. So from Ishwar Tattva, uh, from Sadashiva Tattva, one goes to Ishwar Tattva. So Ishwar Tattva is what? The Gyan Shakti. The thought comes, I have to marry. But then it cannot be just one word marriage which is there in the mind. A lot of associated things will be explored. Many choices will be considered. A thought comes, I want to set up a business. But this thought that I want to set up a business, it cannot manifest by itself. So there has to be some exploration, some collection of knowledge, some data, something on the basis of which one can proceed. So what happens? This thought, I want to do business, had come in the first place, it's Sadashiva, but it was nothing, it was no separate from the person who is having this thought. But now, which business? I want to marry. Which girl? Who will be the groom? What kind of qualities the spouse should have? So all these questions come and the data starts getting collected. So there is an expansion. So here the manifestation has not happened. The universe has not come. The thought has not fructified. But it has now got further extended. It is no longer us. The search has taken us outside. So there is still in the, in the unmanifest form and yet it is only an extension of the being, the Shiva. So the person who is giving rise to manifestation, manifestation, he thinks, oh, this is my extension. So knowledge is an extension of the being, the absolute. So this is the Ishwar Tattva. Then comes the 
fifth element okay, when this these things have been done then a process begins to emerge i have to start a business but how will i do it i will have to arrange finance i have to think of what kind of setup i have how will i keep accounts when will i break even do i conduct a study whether when i will break even so all these things come now when all this information is being processed when as long as it is pure, pure information being processed it is an extension of the being but when something starts happening when the exploration starts becoming more concrete manifestation has still not happened but exploration has gone to a different level then this is shuddha vidya tattva the kriya shakti is being experienced and in the kriya shakti it is aham aham and idam idam so the power of aham the absolute consciousness is there but the power of manifestation which is creating giving rise going to give rise to the universe has also come out in a substantial proportion so these are 50 50 equal emphasis is there so in this power of creation you know there are aspects to it that uh, the brahma is the creator vishnu is the maintainer shiva is a dis- person who is devolving so uh, dissolving so we can see how when we the process is, is going to manifest or a manifestation is about to happen how different roles are going to be played and everything is being put in place by ichha shakti some things have to be created some things have to be maintained some things have to be demolished for something new to happen so oh but everything is still in the womb of that consciousness so there was this shiva which was absolute pure consciousness wanting to do nothing there was this boundless energy or shakti which always comes in a package with shiva and then suddenly this very subtle thought comes up i shall create a play so when this thought comes i create a play the absolute power the shiva shakti combined and that thought they are inseparable they are only an extension of the divine energy so it is sada sada shiva that state is sada shiva but what play will it be how is it going to be played some exploration begins so the pure consciousness extends so whatever comes up the pure consciousness thinks it is an extension of my own existence but when something has been decided upon that shiva has decided oh ho i am going to come in this world in the form of a man or in the form of a woman some some decision has been taken so then the divine and the thought which is going to manifest they both have equal importance that comes the shuddha vidya tattva so this is how the energy begins to fashion its own creation and it happens to each one of us we can relate to it in anything that we do so thus far is it okay or if there are any questions please feel free to ask and i am not in a hurry to finish today so if need be we can just carry it forward so when all this has happened so far it's very clear sir very clear thank you thank you it's a little you know complicated so far, uh, very clear 
even when i try to study it in one reading it did not make any sense and uh, i had to really listen to the lectures of uh, guru ma bharti nirmal a few times to really understand and grasp what was being uh, said there today so, it is clearer ha uh, it is clearer today i i uh, because uh, that day <laughs> i was also you know i doing it for the first time and i was uh, i wanted to finish this the statistics elements in one hour and then i realized that perhaps it is shakti union uh, is a really difficult concept today i am getting a glimpse of it yes it is there these these energies are in, in, in interdependent so and that is why you know you, the shankara acharya in his ode to the devi says that you know shiva is you take the ikar the matra of e out of shiva and shiva becomes shiva so without devi the shiva has no energy nothing shiva is cannot create for so for manifestation for creation of this universe the devi plays yes, the sundar lahari has God is concept. Very lovely, you know. There is this particular verse. I, I, I'm forgetting the verse. Beautiful poem, but beyond uh, comprehension sometimes. But it's lovely to read. Yes. So, so then when this this preparation for this creation has happened, then some more material has to be brought in. So the pure gold is ready. now the gold smith has to add some impurity so that is when we come to the seven shuddha ashuddha tatvas this is the spiritual magnetic energy so if you see that the 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 at the i can share that again so if you uh, see the second column the shuddha shuddha seven shuddha shuddha tatvas and it is said here shat kanchukas shad kanchukas there are six folds or six jackets through which the energy has to pass now the devolution has to happen so first tatva is maya tatva and what is maya maya is the power of illusion of god it is also the power of god it has been created by the divine for the process of evolution or devolution so maya gives us what the illusion of individuality i am separate i am an individual so it is this this veil of ignorance and it is also the material from which further devolution or further individuality is created so maya is very important that is why in the guru gita the lord shiva says that he says shuddha chit shuddha vidya jagan maya dehe cha gyan sambhava udayo yat prakashena guru shabdena kathyate he says that he uses the word maya shuddha vidya jagan maya ye shuddha vidya hai jo maya roop mein deh mein agyan roop mein rehti hai to <laughs> The, the, all these statements are very very mysterious ki he says ki ye shuddha vidya hai why is it shuddha vidya because it is the power of illusion of god now when we know maya to be the power of illusion of god or a creation of god it becomes possible for us to go beyond it in the process of evolution it becomes possible for us to move beyond maya because it has a direct connection with god and where does it live it lives in the body 
So you don't have to really go at anywhere else to explore. By exploring the body and its instruments, one can realize how this magic power of God is bringing in the concept of ignorance by giving us a sense of individuality. So it allows us to forget that we are the sons or children of the divine. When Jesus says, I am the son of God, he does not mean really that he was born by some divine process. All of us are sons of God. We are all children of God and it is possible for us through the process of knowledge to get into that experience where we can really figure out how all of us are children of God. So Maya Tattva is the power of illusion and then, I mean, though it is written here that shed tanchukas, there are six, six jackets, actually Maya is a separate power and it has, it gives rise to then five jackets. There are five jackets through which Panchikanchukas through which the <coughs> consciousness moves. So what is the first Kanchuka? Kanchuka is a jacket. It is limiting you. When you wear a clothes, you are bound by those clothes. You can fit in or you can increase your size only to the extent the clothes will permit you. So then these limitations are imposed by the clothes. So what is the first limitation? Kala Tattva. Kala is what? The limited power of action. This this skill. See, we all are limited in our skills. We can do only this much and no further. The, the creativity does not take us farther than that. All of us have this thing that we are good at certain things, we can do certain things very well, we are very comfortable and there are other things which we are scared of, we, we don't want to do. So, God or Shiva has the power of Sarva Kartritva. He can accomplish anything. But when it is it has come under the influence of Maya Tattva, then it has limited skill in action. Then there is another thing. Vidya Tattva. See, there is limited power of knowledge. Every person can know only this much, a certain, to a certain extent, and cannot know beyond. So there is a limitation placed on the extent to which a person can know. So there is limitation in a skill, there is limitation in knowledge. And why it is a limitation? Because Shiva is having that pure awareness and he has sarva jnanatvam, omniscience, he knows everything. So from that omniscience we have come, we have, we are putting on a jacket of limited power of knowledge. Then the next jacket is Raga Tattva. The limited power of will. Raga is what? Attachment. So, Shiva is Purana. He is absolutely full, all encompassing. But we are so limited. So what we try, 
we try to acquire certain things we try to acquire relationships we try to acquire prestige we try to acquire power whatever whatever we wish whatever we think that is going to complete us that we try to acquire and we keep on trying and trying and trying and at the end of life we still feel oh my god i i could do what i wanted i am so incomplete so that incompleteness is raga tattva then the next one next jacket is kala tattva kal is time and kal is also death so what does time element bring into picture the limitation of time because we are in this space of limitation in this shuddha ashuddha tattva from being kalatit eternal sanatan we are now under the influence of time because every form which has come will die nothing is permanent so from that permanence or eternity we are under the influence of time which is opposed to the very quality of shiva which is nityatvam is eternal so this is how we are devolving and we are going into limitations then there is the niyati tattva you know in the in niyati also means destiny so there is this limitation of experience because of destiny we are under the influence of destiny so we cannot experience everything we are bound by our karma and the force is so strong that we cannot get out so limitation of place we are here in this particular session at this time that is the play of niyati but we can be here the process of learning can be here but at the same time this limitation is that you cannot you have to be here alone you don't have the choice that you are here in this particular session and at the same time you are enjoying sekedarnath you are having darshan in kedarnath because there is the limitation of space so the niyati tattva puts the limitation of space those people who can do astral travel it becomes possible for them they can transcend this tattva but for the ordinary persons or those who are bound by these jackets this is how it is ki one is or is that under the influence of kala tattva that is limited power of skill action creativity embodied beings can accomplish only a few things the vidya tattva limited power of knowledge embodied person can know only a few things raga tattva this is limited power of will you cannot become complete you cannot have everything there is a limitation then kala tattva is limited time because there is limited existence the form will drop so through this body you cannot get everything you are under the influence of time and then the niyati tattva you are also under the influence of space 
So when all these limitations have been brought into play, then the energy or the element of Purush Tattva happens. And Purush Tattva is the human soul, the way we are, under all these limitations. It has certain limitations to operate under. It cannot go beyond those limitations. So you are used to playing the game of cricket. Now in the game of cricket, you never hit a ball with your leg. In fact, you save yourself. Otherwise, if you are before the bowler and you put your leg in the line of the ball and the two touch either, either you are out of the game, you lose. And now you want to play football. And you say, no, no, I'm not going to kick the ball. It's not permitted. So will that work? No. So these are limitations have been placed. So the, 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 the challenge comes that there are certain rules under which we have to exist. We have to operate under and those rules can be suffocating, but the freedom to bend those rules is not being given as long as these limitations are there. You have to play within the rules. And these five kanchukas, the kala tattva, vidya tattva, rag tattva, kala tattva and niyati tattva, they are setting the rules of the game. And Purush has to play accordingly. So is it clear thus far? Yes? So this is how the Purush comes. So Purush is the embodied soul. Now, the, when the Purush comes, then the, these are the elements which we call the Ashuddha Tattva, the gross magnetic energies, those energies which are really pulling a person into the manifested universe, are getting, creating entanglements. So there is Prakriti. So everybody is born with a particular Prakriti. And we, we will understand it better if we, uh, or let us, let us start from the bottom of the third column. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, Guruji. Ji, sir. So, this is the Prakriti Tattva. I, I had prepared some kind of a mind map, so it becomes easier. So, Prakriti Tattva is what? It is coming, to Purushi is in the, the last part in the Shuddha Ashuddha Tattva, and Prakriti is the first in the Ashuddha Tattva. So Prakriti is the unconscious, there is no awareness. It is only being guided by the impressions that have been carried 
either from the past lives or from this life. So whatever the sum total of whatever we have done or experienced, that is determining our prakriti. So in that sense, prakriti is dependent upon purush and purush is dependent upon prakriti. Both are acting upon one another. And what is why there is a prakriti? Because every soul that descends upon this earth has come with an agenda. How that soul has traveled through various lifetimes, that sets the agenda that determines the prakriti. So that is how there is a birth in a particular family, there are certain tendencies which are very predominant in a person. <coughs> and And how is Prakriti being formed? That it is formed out of the soul's objective experiences. So we can understand that better if we go to the bottom of that table where we take the Panch Mahabhutas. This I had discussed in great detail, so I won't spend much time there today. So what are the Panch Mahabhutas? Everybody knows. Since childhood we have known that there are these five elements, Kshiti, Jal, Pavak, Gagan, Samira. So Prithi, the earth element is there, water element is there, fire element is there, air is there, and ether is there, Akash is there. <coughs> but when we talk of elements, we are not actually talking of earth, water, fire, air, and space we are referring to their qualities, their inherent character. No other organ, perhaps no other object in human life. Who is this? Sir, I muted. I muted, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so, when Earth comes, what are the qualities associated with Earth? So there is stability, solidity, rigidity, and adherence. So there are some great qualities like stability and solidity, but there is rigidity also. So depending upon how this element is playing in our life at that time, you know, those, those, those tendencies will be noticed. And earth is very solid, there's difficulty in movement, so it becomes, when it becomes more subtle, there is greater movement. So there is the water element. And water element has greater freedom compared to earth. But water has it, an issue where it can flow downwards. So one has to be careful. So water is determining certain our sexual activities, our immediate environment how our relationship with ourselves and whether there is flow or not. So if somebody feels that life is at a standstill, there is no flow, there is suffocation, then there is need to work upon the water element. There is something wrong with the element there. Then the next is fire element. Fire is more subtle than water. Downwards it gives heat. Upwards it gives light. It can transmit things from one place to the other. In our scriptures, in our tradition, fire is always the means of offering, making offerings to God. So it is said that when we offer something with devotion to fire here on this earth, it is carried to the heavens. We offer things to our ancestors through fire, we offer things to God through fire, whatever. So fire is a sublimating energy. So we must understand fire as transforming or sublimating energy. <coughs> then comes air. Air is more subtle than fire in the sense that it is more powerful, it has tremendous mobility, it can just go from one place to the other. In fact, in Gita, when Arjuna is talking, 
to lord lord krishna at some place he says he 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 gives gives an analogy of air to the power of the mind and he says chanchalam hi manah krishna pramathi balavad dridham tasyaham nigraham manye vayu ruvi sudushkaram he says ki oh my lord the mind is so powerful it is as powerful as the wind and controlling in the mind is as difficult as controlling the wind so this is the quality of air it has tremendous mobility expansion but it can it can create certain strong likes and dislikes it can create some destructive energies so more subtle than air is the akasha ether it is empty space but that space is very prominent because in that space everything is contained so scientists have not been able to figure out what is the size of this universe and it is said that this is just one universe we are talking of so there are hundreds of universes i think uh, in, in the scriptures they say that there are 118 bhuvans so how much akash or ether is there it's not possible to comprehend it's very subtle so when all the other elements are dissolving then one can experience the akasha which is a state of tremendous expansion so when we see talk of these elements we are talking of the elemental qualities so if we are we are aware we can see which element is becoming dominant and just by becoming aware perhaps it is possible to go beyond the effect of that particular element now <clears throat> these are the panch mahabhutas these are the grossest form in uh, forms in existence apart from these panch mahabhutas we have the panch tan matras so when we are moving around in this world and we are going through this world we are experiencing this world so how do we experience so there are these five sensory organs i mean this 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 five tan matras so there is the gandha gandha tan matra is associated with earth odor oh, why is it associated with earth because the molecules have to go into the nostril for the particular odor to be experienced so what is the tan matra a tan matra is nothing but the abode where all these sensory observations are deposited so gandha tan matra is not the nose it is somewhere in our own conscious consciousness where all the odors that we have experienced their experience is being stored similar is the rasa the tanmatra of taste so the tanmatra of taste it comes from the it corresponds to the element of water our tongue is always having saliva so if the tongue becomes dry we cannot experience any taste so it is only through water that we experience the taste but that experience of taste is stored in the tanmatra of rasa the same thing happens in rupa rupa is the tanmatra of fire why rupa is the tanmatra of fire because it is only in the light that a particular form can be comprehended it can be perceived so the tanmatra of fire is responsible for rupa that is where all the impressions of rupa 
whatever we have seen in terms of form, all those impressions are being stored. The air, you know, there has to be a slight movement, a slight kind of friction for us to experience touch. So that is why Sparsha is the Tanmatra of air. So all the sense of touch, where it is stored, where it resides, that is the Tanmatra of Sparsha. And similarly, for sound to happen, space is needed. Empty space is needed for sound. So the Tanmatra of Shabda, I mean the sound, corresponds to the element of space and that is where all the experiences of sound are stored. Now why these Tanmatras are important? We will see that there is a combine of man, buddhi, ahankar, the internal organs of perception are there, the antahakaram, internal instruments. So in the antahakaram, because of we have certain likes and dislikes, so we have an order we like it. It is stored and it will come up as craving. We have like certain taste. The tanmatra of taste will store that. So you see, when you like rasgullas, at some point of time a person has become a diabetic. He is not going to eat rasgullas anymore. But in his neighborhood, there is a sweet shop. He is passing on the road and he sees his newly, freshly done rasgullas in the showcase and the mouth starts watering. Because the taste of rasgullas, which has been stored in the Tanmatra rasa, that has been activated. So as we are going through this world, we have likes and dislikes for Gandha, Rasa, Rupa, Sparsha, Shabda. And the Tanmatra does a very good job of storing those likes and dislikes also. So at the right time or whenever these likes and dislikes begin to formulate our personality, our prakriti, who we truly are. And that is how we become what we become. <clears throat> that is the bondage. So that, it, it's a great secret here. Okay, what is binding us to this world? These tanmatras are binding through our likes and dislikes. So if we drop the notion of liking and disliking, the tanmatra will not store anything. Or even if it does, it will store information which has not it does not have the capacity of controlling us. It will be just information. So it is a great secret here that Kashmir Shaivism offers us an insight that if we just become aware of our likes and dislikes and bring our likes and dislikes under the scanner of awareness, then there is nothing which is liked or nothing that is disliked. You are passing through a flow, you go to a nice fair, all kinds of games are being played, you watch every game, you enjoy it and you pass out. 
that's it because there is nothing that oh this one is really great i would love to come back to this install again this is not there or this is very boring so many people crowding this install just let me get out of it so getting out with awareness is a different thing and getting out under the impulse of this kind of thought dislike is totally another so we can go through the life the drama of life with complete awareness we will still be doing the same thing but it will not have the ability to bind us this is the secret which kashmir shivism offers through this knowledge so how these tanmatras are there then what comes the first panch karmendriyas the five organs of action so this organ of actions we see the starts with upastha the procreation the genitals do procreation this organ of sex and urination and payu the organ of excretion the anus and pada that is walking we use our feet to walk so this is related with our movement action of movement the pani the action of grasping or giving this is the organ by which we can give or take by hands and walk the speech so what kind of words do come come out from us and this walk is also silent you know what kind of thoughts we have what is the conversation we are having with ourselves all the time so by highlighting this the kashmir shivism says become aware so let there be no thought which comes out by force of habit every single thing should be with full awareness and full responsibility then panch gyanendriyas there is five sense organs through which we know so there is the for smelling there is the nose for rasna there is the tongue for tasting the chakshu for seeing there are the eyes for tvak that is for touch there is the skin and this the, the shrotra the hearing it happens through ears so these are the organs so in a way the the grana smelling is the nose is not just smelling but it is also creating odors you know the same smell creates two different reactions on people two different persons the same food can give elicit different responses from different persons because their sense of taste is different they are interpreting the food is the same but they are interpreting uh, the tongue is interpreting it in a different manner and that information is being seen by their filter of likes and dislikes in different manners so you see that is how by binding nature is being created okay, because we have a filter of likes and dislikes we are bound if we drop that we are free and then the real taste real smell real you know sight or touch and the speech that will begin to manifest if we drop these filters now he come to actually these filters okay. above this this is the mind so what is manas so manas is the, you know manas tattva is the sankalp sadhan you know it is that one which creates thoughts sankalp sankalp vikalp so it is the lower mind so it creates thoughts what could be the thought hey, i am going i have done this i know this i have seen this face earlier 
So these are the simple thoughts. It is a general sense data. You are not imposing your likes and dislikes. Manas does that. So it, it creates data, it classifies them, it puts them, it's like the postman sorting out a tapal or a dark duck in a post office. Now those post offices are become, becoming extinct. But it is, this is how it is. But it, it has a filter. The buddhi tattva. So it has a filter. The buddhi tattva. Buddhi is what? It is a process of determination. It comes into play that, oh, oh, I like this thing, I like that person, I know that person, I don't know that person, he is a stranger. So there is a kind of confirmation which the buddhi gives. It can be an intellectual confirmation. I know this, it, I liked it, it is a good thing for me. It can be a moral confirmation. I must be very religious. It's a moral confirmation. So this is how buddhi comes into play. And it makes a, it's a determination first of the rightness or otherwise of a decision or action. So it can give a yes answer or a no answer. And it can classify things as good or bad. <coughs> and that is how the choice happens. Then there is the Ahankar Tattva. So what is Ahankar? Ahankar is the power of personality. What is ego? It is, it is who I, I think who, this is who I am. So it is an offshoot of buddhi, but through the filter of manas and buddhi, all that is being brought out from down below, it determines our ahankar. It is decided by ahankar and ahankar really believes, I like this, so this is good, I want, I deserve. These are the kinds of determination that ahankar does. So, Hankar is that kind of thing. It is a separate identity that the soul has created for himself. So those attributes or action or knowledge, this is, this has become our Ahankar. Mm -hmm. And Ahankar and Prakriti are closely linked. Because as I said, if whatever experiences we are having, objective experiences in the world, so those we enjoy or those we find as pleasant, those which please our ahankar, those are the choices we keep with ourselves. And there are other choices we don't keep, want to keep, so we resent, we fight, we struggle, we try to push them away. So this is what is making the Prakriti. So under the influence of Ahankar, the choices we have made, those choices become our Prakriti, the limited nature of human being. And that Prakriti is manifesting in through different gunas or different tendencies, so they can be sometimes in the Sattva, where there is light, and pleasure or joy, it can be in rajas, you know, and the activity sattva, rajas and tamas, or there can be light, activity and darkness, or there can be pleasure, insentience and pain. So this becomes the prakriti. And the prakriti that brings us to See, from the Prakriti Tattva, what comes here, we come to the bottom of the second column, which is Purush. So Purush is the limited Jiva that has come down. Purush and Prakriti, they are both complementing each other. 
like shiva and shakti are inseparable purush and prakriti are inseparable prakriti is determining who the purusha is going to be so whatever has one has whatever impressions one has collected in the world through all past lifetimes their sum total the sum total of all those experiences the sum total of all those choices one has made all the likes and dislikes one has created those become the prakriti and when the purush comes into being the purush is experiencing that prakriti so even if you watch small kids growing you can see their strong likes and dislikes so those are choices they have brought from their earlier time and <clears throat> so this is how it is starting from shiva tatva where there is absolute freedom so chandanath has come to panch mahabhutas in the bound state and how that shiva the absolute energy becomes purush and the purush comes takes on different uh, impurities and devolves in the form of the panch mahabhutas this is the knowledge contained there and i said that this knowledge is very important because if we really see ourselves if we start becoming aware of the different limitations that are, we are operating under we also get a key to the freedom over those limitations so let us just do a small experiment ha huh. before we do that if you have any questions please feel free to ask so no? okay wonderful so ha ah, yes is there a is there a text uh, which we can study on uh, kashmir saivism uh, actually what i am following is uh, this book uh, kashmir saivism kashmir saivism saivism the secret supreme by by swami lakshmanju see uh, i think perhaps you were not there on the earlier day uh, kashmir saivism was uh, has existed in kashmir so this particular belief system it 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 arose in kashmir and there were a series of living masters who expounded the ideas and this knowledge was being transmitted from only from the master to disciple and it was reading again and again ha, i am coming to that it was only being transmitted by from masters to disciples and the last known exponent or great master was swami lakshmanju maharaj so swami lakshmanju was born in a very highly culturally rich and educated family of kashmiri brahmins and his father was the one who came upon the concept of houseboats because the land laws in kashmir were always very strict and people who were residents of outside they were not allowed to live there and the britishers wanted to live there so swami lakshman ji's father it is said that he came upon the concept of having houseboats and houseboats started to be created where people came and started living people owned houseboats so swami lakshmanju had his own 
spiritual master and he was meditating he had been given a certain practice and uh, he did a very intense tapasya as a, even in his childhood and finally he went to a house boat himself where he it was it was a very quiet place those days so there are certain secrets were revealed and he, he received shakti path where the knowledge became evident to him so he was recognized all over india as the, the living authority of kashmir shaivism and great masters used to go and visit him and spend time with him and not only the masters would go they would take their disciples also along so there are two three masters about whom i am aware you know many living masters went and met him and baba muktanand took a group of disciples to meet swami lakshman ji in srinagar maharshi mahesh yogi took a large entourage of his disciples now there were two persons a couple who were disciples of maharshi mahesh yogi now after they had spent time some time with swami lakshman ji recognized that swami lakshman ji was a great being and they took permission from maharshi mahesh yogi to go to kashmir and study kashmir shaivism philosophy under swami lakshman ji so there were challenges of language other things but they just did not bother and they went and studied and swami lakshman ji also had this understanding because many masters had been coming to meet him he realized that this knowledge was very precious and even though it has to be transmitted in a from a master to disciple tradition in a master to disciple tradition it is time that this knowledge is made public so this particular couple who lived with him they transcribed everything that swami lakshman ji was teaching they learned sanskrit they learned uh, the kashmiri language in which swami ji used to speak sometimes they took notes and swami ji gave some lectures in english also so they just uh, compiled everything and brought out these books so these books became the subject of study and through these studies there were many who got connected to the masters of kashmir shaivism transcendently and they received the knowledge so those who study kashmir shaivism they have this assurance from the masters of the kashmir shaivism school that at some point of time the masters will shower grace and give that absolute understanding i can see master uma's aura shining bright the masters are pleased so the book is available i will and uh, i will put the link and it can be purchased from amazon these are <coughs> teachings given by swami lakshman ji explaining what kashmir shaivism is and uh, i was just saying that it is not just theoretical knowledge it is very practical knowledge which we can apply so 
Let us try it here and now. So just become aware of your breath. Remember one thing in life. which you think is a habit you would like to give up but you are not able to give up or there is something which is bothering you you want to do it now now when you hold a thought of something that you really want to have in the here and now and it is not happening or it is not going to happen see how your consciousness your thoughts get colored by the desire which is unfulfilled. Be very alert. Watch how the desire is coming up. how your senses, your mind, your ego wants that satisfaction that you are seeking. It could be something in your food, it could be something of a sense enjoyment, it could be the company of a loved one you really want, it could be a place you might want to travel, It could be anything. It could even be your desire to become liberated here and now. Just watch that desire come up. And see how it is affecting you. And now, try and figure out where is this desire coming from. What is the source of this desire? Search with all your attention Employ the entire power of your attention at your command Figure out where is this desire coming from
You may gently open your eyes. Bringing yourself in the here and now. Can we have some sharing? Will someone share what happened? Anyone? Lila ji, you want to share uh, something? Can I share? Ah, please. Yes. I, you said about the desire for liberation. That has always been in my mind. But then I found it's coming from my ego. Also from what I have heard my teacher, my gurus and the scriptures I have read. I've been influenced by those things. But also I found that my ego is at play. It wants to prove something. So when when you shifted your attention to where your desire is coming from, what happened? Yes. What happened? I went on uh, digging deeper and deeper to find out which age. So I went from my very early age, school time, college time, I have been listening to Gita lectures, reading the scriptures, and I found a great desire to realize my true self, etc. But at the same time, not, I found that it, since it was colored by my ego, I have not made any progress. All these years I've been reading, listening, more and more books I buy. I keep reading, keep chanting, but then... I feel that I have not received that inner joy, which which should be there. Thank you. So then I found it was my ego, which is trying to do all this. So I don't want that desire now. Thank you. So the desire is gone. Yes. Let it happen. Let the Lord give so, his grace. Uh, if, uh, if the desire is not there, you are free. You are all these, it's it's yeah. only because of this experiment, I was able to discover that it is the ego that is pretending to be on the spiritual path. And if you have finished sharing, can I add something there? Yes, 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 I finished. See, first of all, everybody please give a big hand, big round of applause to Leelaji. She has had a wonderful sharing. And it is so true that I, I don't. I feel very sad, sir. I feel very ah, sad now. Have to be sad. I, I am coming to that. I, I let now. Can can we add something, Nilaji? See, it is like this that when you started searching, then you touched certain levels of the mind and ego, which you had not searched, uh, which you had not scraped this far. So this knowledge came that there is a certain craving or attachment. I would not call it exactly ego, but there is a craving or attachment to the very idea of being liberated. So that itself becomes a hurdle. It's a desire, which is the other thing to be realized is that one is already liberated. The very fact that we are in human form and the Lord lives within us as us, we are liberated beings. But we are thinking that we are in bondage only because we do not realize that experience that the Lord is living within us as us. So this is something which all of us can take home today. And thank you so much, Leela Ji. And you don't have to be sad. You have made a great discovery. It will be a life-changing 
experience anybody else wants to share something actually we can wish her a very happy birthday oh wonderful so you newly born today <laughs> thank you so many happy returns of the bed day it's her birthday today huh? wonderful a spiritual uh, birthday spiritual yes uh, that is why they say that who is a dwaj a dwaj is say twice born so one birth is when our parents give us this physical form and the other birth happens when grace shines and we discover our own true nature so this is the second birthday so thank you so much umaji for pointing it would you like to share something umaji or uh, should i ask you can ask somebody okay ha uh, anybody else please please share something must have happened to everybody ratan ji kya hua matang Not Not much. Much. Not much. Nain, what? Nain, nain. Kuch hua. What was the thought that 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 you 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 had? had? desire desire. When we said think of a desire that is remains unfulfilled and that you want. So what was that particular thought or desire? You did not think that. So you did not follow the process. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. anybody else who else sonika gyan bhai ha aapne kiya wo process ha nahi maine wo process nahi kiya but i was listening to what you were saying no then how will you imbibe kashmir shavisham then why are you here you think about it i don't i'm not asking you to give an answer you think anybody else wants to share something see these these things are very important sonika ha huh. anybody else wants to share something no so you take it as homework hema you want to say something ji sir bolo sir maine habit ko dekha ek Hmm. so i have a habit of digging myself hmm. uh any skin which comes out i have this habit and i am trying very hard to overcome this habit and i when you were saying things i went into my childhood as a nursery or a kg student and because my nails were not cut my teacher took me out of the class as a punishment and she gave punishment you stand outside and uh, and this thing came to my notice of my father and my father said that is not the mistake of the child that is the mistake of the parents so from that uh, thing to be perfect you know i have to be perfect nothing should be because uh, to be approved or to be perfect came into my system because i was made outside stand outside made to stand outside the class for the whole period or two because she was the class teacher at that time so this came <laughs> so what was the desire that that remained and and how, when you investigated where is it coming from so the desire was to be approved hmm so by people around and did you go further down no then it said no you don't have to approve yourself you are good the way you are so what happens this is the secret <clears throat> that any desire that comes up if we make it a habit that we don't have to really fulfill it the moment it comes up and we see the desire so when we see the desire and investigate where it is coming from then after a few minutes the desire is not there i think to be in in always in perfection also is coming from that memory only to be perfect 
a limitation. Yeah, it's a limitation. It's a limitation which the Purusha has created and imposed uh, under mm-hmm. some jacket of, you know, approval seeking, whatever. The ahankar has come. But what happens at any limitation, any desire that we look for, where it is coming from? I'm, I'm now asking it to be interpreted from Kashmir Shaivism point of view. See, what is the desire? Desire is the Ashuddha Tattva. But in any Ashuddha Tattva, in all the th- 36 elements, you know, these 24 elements are Ashuddha Tattva. In every element, the Shuddha Tattva is always present. Shiva and Shakti are always present. It is only that we consider it as a limitation or we feel bound simply because we are looking at that desire, at the limitation. And we are not looking at the absolute energy, subjective energy of God through which that devolution has happened and this limitation has appeared. So limitation is what? It is the power of devolution, the power of descent. From his pristine state, Shiva comes down and becomes this manifestation. So this experiment that I said, that watch your desire. So desire is what? A state of devolution. But in that desire, Shiva is always present. So you see where this desire is coming from. So when we look at where this desire is coming from, then you are taking your attention back to Shiva. So after some time, only Shiva will remain. Desire will disappear. So pure energy of consciousness will remain. We can understand it in another way also. You sit by the sea, you see all kinds of waves rising in the sea. Each wave has its own form. So a desire is like a wave in the ocean. But if you really watch it, then uh, where it is coming from? So you find it is coming from the ocean itself. So if you go into the ocean, there is no desire. There is a lot of movement on the surface of the ocean. But if you dive deep into the ocean, there is no movement. So this is the secret. Kashmir Shaivism is offering it in a very scientific way. You look at a desire, you look at a limitation, but become aware of that limitation. The moment you become aware of limitation, because the infinite power of Shiva through its own will has become that limitation, by focusing on that limitation and by investigating it, you go into that state of Shivahood where the limitation does not apply. So it applies to each one of us. And I, I had not read Kashmir Shavism when I, I applied this in my own life. One instance which need not be shared publicly, I shared with you. But the other thing is like this, that I was addicted to tea. I used to have at least 8 to 10 cups of tea every day. Now, so much of tea tea drinking was affecting me. So at some point of time, I felt I should give up tea. But this was something I liked. It was very difficult. So then I was reading a spiritual book, a spiritual biography. And there, one of the persons who was the main character there describing his own experiences, he just shared his own experience. He said, I was so much used to, he was born in a rich family and the tradition was that every two, three months you go and spend some time in a hill station in good natural surroundings. But he got into a very responsible government job and it was not possible for for him to do this. So as long as he was a junior officer, it was still, he was still doing it. But as his responsibilities grew, 
it was not possible for him to leave his station and then he felt suffocated so one day when he was really wanting to go to some hill station and he was not able to do so his guru visited him and he spoke to the guru about it and he said i can cannot do this and i feel so unhappy and the guru said next time this desire comes up watch it and try and investigate where it is coming from and he said you will notice that after some time the desire itself will not be there so i tried to use this technique with my tea addiction so one day when i was sitting in office i used to have tea at 11 o'clock then at 1 1:30 we used to have lunch uh, after lunch then somewhere at 4 o'clock these three cups of tea i used to have myself but then there will be visitors so each time a visitor would come i would ask for tea <clears throat> and it went on endlessly so that day when i decided to use this practice or this technique when the desire arose i did not act upon it at 11 o'clock i was sitting in office and as usual the craving came up you know must have tea so let me see and then i decided to ask myself where is this desire coming from and as i watched <clears throat> after a few minutes the desire disappeared the craving was no longer there that day it repeated a few times because i was used to it the body was used to that whatever you know <laughs> intoxicant he has and within a day i found that i had not taken tea at all for two years from that day i did not drink tea later on i started again but i know that with this practice there is nothing that binds me and when i was studying kashmir shaivism then this realization came that when you know have the understanding that shiva is doing his leela through you you can enjoy everything be the satchandanath but enjoy it in a fashion that you are not addicted to anything you are not bound by anything and it becomes your leela so my request to all of you is that when you are here if some practice is given please try and do it if you do not understand what is being asked don't sit idle ask i don't understand what you mean so maybe there was some flaw or fault in my asking you to do the practice i could not explain what i want so please ask because if you do not ask and just keep keep sitting quietly then you are not participating the whole purpose is that we grow together so let us make it more participative there are satsangs there are lectures people go and sit and come back but a real satsang which has to become an inner satsang at all times has to be participated
and uh, we will continue with Kashmir Shavisam. And through the week, please make it a practice. When you are going through life, the desires are going to come up. At the end of the week, don't tell me that I did not have any desire. Desire for food, desire for sleep, desire for going out, desire for taking a break from work, desire for getting out of boredom, whatever comes up. Be alert. Make a note. And do not forget to ask yourself, where is this desire coming from? and see what happens. If you are alert, then something will happen. So remember that. And feel free to share. And if you still cannot do it, I am available on phone. Give me a call and ask, what is it that you want us to do? Because a spiritual progress, if this one Thing that 36 elements of Kashmir Shavism, if everybody understand, rest assured you can be liberated in this life. It's the promise of the masters. It's not my promise. Because it will open many doors. Many practices will become accessible. And above all, it will open the door of upgradation of awareness. Unless one is aware, one cannot be liberated. So, so much for now. And thank you, uh, Leela Ji and Hema, for these wonderful shares. And thank you, Master Uma, for your presence. It is very inspiring to see how the aura was expanding when I was speaking about the masters. So let us end with this Shanti part. Om Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhino Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhagbhave Om Shanti 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 Shanti